From around about 700 BC, the arrival of ironworking techniques came to Britain from southern Europe. This brought Britain into the Iron Age. The development of iron revolutionised many aspects of life. The most significant change was that of agriculture. Iron tipped ploughs could turn soil much faster and deeper than older wooden or bronze ones. As iron was more durable than bronze, it also meant that iron axes could clear forest land much more efficiently and therefore timber resources were much more efficiently processed. Iron Age Britons lived in organised tribal groups which were run by a chieftain. These tribal groups were often at conflict with one another and this led to the development of hill forts. These were essentially fortified hills or high ground where tribes and small communities could gather and stand their ground when attacked. One of the more common buildings that were built during the Iron Age was the Roundhouse. As with the Bronze Age, roundhouses were popular structures as they were relatively quick to build and were able to withstand bad weather for larger periods of time than the more primitive structures that were before them. The team at Butzer Ancient Farm have created a gateway into history, taking you from early Mesolithic primitive living all the way up to the Roman and Saxon eras of Britain. But one of the most significant pieces of Butzer is their Iron Age village. The area consists of six Iron Age roundhouses, all inspired by real-life archaeology findings across Britain. The most impressive of which is the 50-foot roundhouse that was inspired by the Little Woodbury roundhouse discovered on the Salisbury Plains in the south of England. This massive roundhouse was excavated by Gerard Bursu in the 1930s and was the first excavation to look at an entire structure rather than small areas. The huge roundhouse was constructed with a solid oak timber frame and oak lintels. The walls are made from wattle and daub and the rafters made from a mixture of ash and alder. Here are Simon and Therese to tell you more about this impressive build and to give you a tour of the other roundhouses that form the Iron Age settlement at Butzer Ancient Farm. This one behind us is our largest roundhouse it's based on evidence from Little Woodbury, again on Salisbury Plain, and it was a really, really important excavation. So back mm. in the 1930s, a German chap called Gerard Bursu, in a way it was the first excavation to look at an entire structure. So prior to that, um, people had excavated little bits of sites, and therefore the kind of common understanding was that Iron Age people lived in pits and scrabbled around in the dirt. And Bursu's excavations showed that actually people were constructing quite elaborate structures and quite large structures such as this one. It's been standing here for, since uh, 2007 um, and it took roughly around about um, eight, nine months to construct. So not too long. I mean, to put the, the walls, the posts, the posts up, the rafters within a few months, uh, that was completed. It's the thatching. It takes a long, long There's time. A <laughs> There's a lot of thatch up there. Really nice space. Um, we're doing some maintenance in there at the moment. So that's the, 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 it's key with all these houses. You don't just simply put them up. Um, we monitor them, we look at them, but we've got to put a lot of maintenance in them. And it's like your home, your house at home, basically. It's, it's kind of get on, just make sure you're keeping everything painted, the upkeep, changing anything that needs to happen. Otherwise, it goes too far and you can't rescue it. Um, and over in, over in the side there, we've got the Danbury house. We let the roof go a little bit too long on there. And we, it started to rot on the rafters and the battens, the hazel battens um, around one side. We had some strong winds last year and it kind of got under the, the eaves and flipped the roof slightly over. So um, it's kind of stripped right back, take all the thatch off new new rafters on there and new hurdles and we've put some supports around the walls as well so hopefully we'll get like another good sort of 20 years out of that house but maintenance is key all the time it's really important as well because mm. a lot of the questions that we ask about prehistoric buildings is how long did they last and how long could they last and we're showing through these experiments that actually you can repair in little woodbury you'll see that we're able to take sections of the wall out and rebuild them without yeah. compromising the integrity of the house um, so these things have a long, potentially long lifespan. According to the archaeology, it has this line of posts in there that showed quite a large doorway. And when we originally built this, this house, we incorporated the, the, the kind of the porch more embedded into the roof. Like it was almost like a big brow that went over it. Because if we get 
severe uh, storm damage. We always find it's the porch that take, it, it's affected the most. And as I understand it, I think the, when we had those big storms back in 1987, these houses were standing on top of Butzer Hill and there was only a small amount of damage of displaced thatch on one side, but what got ripped away was the porch. And on several houses, they got completely ripped away. But the, the circular structure as a whole, they withstand a lot of wind, so it was really important. So we tried a kind of a brow, trying to incorporate it in there. It didn't work in too well with the um, pitch of the thatch. So within a few years, we were having water coming through the, that, um, the, around that kind of porch area. So a little strip back, a little bit of a change in maintenance, and we've ended up putting this kind of ridge in there. Makes the thatch last longer, but if we get some high winds, we may be in danger of it kind of displaced and being moved on that one. So got complete oak framing throughout, so it's all the uprights again are oak. Um, even within the walls, we've got like a, an outer lintel as well. You can't see it's behind the door, but they're all oak uprights with hazel being used to weave in and out. Split hazel above the porch. Um, we've got hazel you, again using as the, the, the battens that are going around and we've used a mixture of ash and alder for the roof rafters as well. So, so we're inside the little Woodbury now um, and you can sort of yeah, see the scale of it. Uh, 15 meters diameter and about nine meters high as well. So it's a very, very large house. Perhaps it would have been furnished all the way around, but within our house here, we've just got some seating. So it just feels very open. And we get a lot of comments, think, people thinking it's like, was this like a communal sort of discussion area or a meeting area and things like that. But I think that's only because we perhaps haven't got the right furnishings in there here as well. So there would have perhaps been curtains, certain areas blocked off maybe. We don't, we honestly don't know. So, but we use it to keep quite open because it's a great space to do any entertaining here. We have lots of school children that visit and we can get around about 150 school children sitting down to have their talks to learn about the house they're sitting in there. So it's quite nice to sort of keep it open as well. So yeah. We're doing a lot of maintenance onto it. We're redoing the walls around there. Um, it, just over time, that the wattle has got has gone to powder. We need to change it around. It's been here since 2007. Um, and we want to carry on using it as a, as a great entertainment space, really. We do a lot of storytelling in here, uh, lots of music, lots of mead. Uh, lots of mead is drunk in here. <laughs> so it's really nice and it's a great atmosphere. And um, it, when you have the fire going, and the story time, the music, and it's just, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. And then structurally, it's really good for us because we're able to do those repairs on the walls without damaging the structure because of this internal ring of quite hefty uprights, which are holding the, the, the roof up main structure. So we're able to take out panels of wattle and redo them. The hazel that we were using um, when we built it was like a summer cut hazel. I, it retained too much moisture. And even though it was remained clamped within that daub, what's happened is that moisture's ended up kind of eating it away. And so you get this, the hazel, and you can see here, and it's just completely kind of just going into powder. Um, and then what happens there from that is slowly gravity takes over and it's kind of slumping down. And you can see these sort of areas down here that the daub is just completely coming away and slumping down to the floor. The exercise really is, start at the beginning, we take it down a section and take off this daub here. Um, we've got an area outside where we wet it down, we reconstitute it as well. So we may add a bit more dung to it, things like that, but this is all recyclable. So we can reuse it, get it and get it back onto the wall. Once we've got the daub down, cleared, and everything's brushed away, a hot, nice section, we then use um we were, this time we're using split hazel here and this was some of the it was late winter cut stored and we, we've got a guy coming in and he splits the hazel down and um and you can see just down on this area here um and then we just get the door back on there as well so you can see this kind of nice it's interesting though even though we're reusing it to me, I, it's not as sticky as I like it to be. I like it a little bit more stickiness on there. And it's just got lots of volunteers just pushing it into the, into that, um, into the wattle. And that should hopefully dry. This has only been put on a few minutes ago. And it's just worked on there. And what you do is spend 
get it on the walls to map perhaps as it slowly dries out tomorrow you just want to go over a little bit of a wet hand smooth it off and get a very nice nice surface onto it once it's dried we then line wash it and it gives this nice bright white effect on there um, we'll just continue all the way around until we're done but you can just see actually underneath here there's there's one of the lintels so you've got uh, these oak uprights um, and then a, an oak lintel put on there and then that's all wattled in between and it, that's really helped us keep the maintenance going on there we couldn't have taken that down that outer wall really um, without affecting the roof um, but lucky we got that lintel in place and it's quite it was quite nice when we had these because we've got these huge timbers that go all the way up to the top there and to have this uh, these uprights and this outer wall works really nicely like to kind of slide that rafter up get it fixed in and then you can just work from the ground work all your way up to the point up to the top there so yeah works very well just how kind of it's nothing to it you just see it. it's absolute powder now isn't it huge home it's a quite a status piece really so if you've got a little bit of problem with the walls just because you're going to spend the next couple of weeks repairing it that's nothing that's easily done and we'll get another 10 15 20 years out of it before we need to worry about it again hopefully a little bit longer because we've used a, a more of a winter cut hazel in there rather than this sort of summer cut the other big problem we had actually was we had uh, a, quite an infestation of rodents uh, around there as well so they were kind of getting into the walls they create gaps more moisture gets in and you get more problems with that one so hopefully we've brought that more under control as well and we've got a more of a, a sealed up daub in there to kind of preserve that hazel and for a longer term see the smoke though. so and you can look as you go down and you can see the smoke does it, it sort of sits around that lintel um, and certainly in the winter isn't it you you kind mm. of sit you stand in here and you're honestly honestly not in any smoke whatsoever and you just get that kind of smoke ceiling and what you get is the light of the fire kind of reflecting off that kind of smoke ceiling as well which lights up the place it's not dark in here um, and it, it just works it really does it kind of preserves all those timbers and we've played around before we've ended up sort of smoking meat um, our own pork up there uh, it's been up there for a few months bring it down it's like that kind of prosciutto ham heavily salted it's really nice um, I did have a guy he said he, he kept something up there for several years uh, yeah I'm not sure <laughs> on that one um, <laughs> and um, in one of the other houses actually we each year we um we hang salmon up in in the smoke for a week and that's all you need isn't a week and it's the best it really is it really works well preserving your meat um preserving your thatch and your timbers and things like that okay this is our latest house and teresa's been heavily involved with this build as well yeah cs20 is yep. it cs20 circular structure 20. um and we are just sort of in the process of finishing off getting those little finishing touches off there's still a lot to do inside but on the outside we're just getting all that nice and tidy in that so yeah it's been a labor of love for yeah. many many months now almost i would say a year best part of a year i guess yeah um but again with volunteers that so we've been really lucky to have a, a crack team on it and we're just finishing the daubing we're using a, experimenting with a different kind of daub mixture for this one so often we use dung and clay and um, lots of fiber but the archaeology here told us that there were a number of different daub fabrics but most of them were very chalk rich so we follow that as closely as we can and hence the lovely already white color that we mm. that we're getting yes yeah, so this is a temporary we had a, we had a Celt staying here at the weekend uh, <laughs> built themselves a little fire but we'll uh, yeah. shift all this out and you can see the floor is not in a bad state but obviously it's got lots of bits of thatch where they're in the spring and summer the rain was hoofing through um, so there's lots of bits and pieces that we need yeah. to clear out and then think about a door and then yeah we're going to try to get something like a nice felt banner if you like going right around the way to see how effective that is in closing up the gap so this is the, one of the first times in the iron age buildings that we've got where we've done just really simple joints so this one is just cut in as you can see resting on it um, the cross beams and then we've pegged the rafters in mm. with uh, nice oak pegs um, and we see this we don't see it in, from Danbury Iron Age Hill Fort but from other Iron Age sites where there's a lot of really nice preservation so Glastonbury Lake Village you get waterlogged preservation and you do see evidence for simple joinery but really effective stuff yeah and we've just spent a little bit more time looking at that top so we don't 
end up sort of crowding it too much mm. with the rafters. We've stepped them down so we get you get your um, main primary rafters going up to the very top there. Uh, so we, we've got about four primary rafters. And then on this kind of circular, a chandelier, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, which was again just easily done by the guy, uh, our copper guy Darren, who who spit all the hazel out. Get that up there, and then we have these sort of secondary rafters that sit on there, and then eventually we go down to these small in between rafters uh, that you can see. So we've got these low ones. So we're not putting too much weight up to the top there. We're not overcrowding it as well. So we get it seems to be a bit. There's more movement up there. A lot easier to thatch as well. So things we might think about are, we talked before about the possibility that these buildings in the past in the Iron Age were partitioned off. So, so not something that we do because we like to facilitate all the school groups and our visitors and uh, all the people that we have coming to see our buildings. But in the past, there's a good possibility that you might have had sections partitioned off, mm -hmm. sections for sleeping, sections for weaving. We've got a lumen here. It's a temporary uh, measure at the moment, but thinking about what's going on in different parts of the structure. Yeah. Yeah, so and, it, and another interesting one, the roof as well, wasn't it? It's, it's completely separate from the walls. The walls are very, um, I'd say lightweight or really kind of, it, you can see the sort of structure. It was almost like a basket structure. So to put on the weight of the roof sitting on there, mm -hmm. it was going to sort of perhaps crush those walls down eventually. So what we've got is all the main weight, the kind of the balancing points sort of sit on these, raft, on these lintels. Um, and with the primary rafters go to the ground on the outside. So the wall is completely separate from the roof. So if we have problems with the walls in the future, then we can vice versa, change things around and not affect, not affect all of the structure at the same time. Which is really important because one of the mm. first kind of questions we had in the archeology, span you could see very clear evidence for 114 upright stake holes going around the outside, but they were unusually close together. So normally in mm. a kind of wattle hurdle configuration, they're around 20 centimeters apart. Yeah but these were much less, around 15 centimetres apart. So one of the questions we had was, how do you firstly wattle that? So we weaved every second upright, and we thought that would make it stronger actually, but it was a little bit wobbly. So we went back to the archeology span to look at what other structural elements might there be. And hence uh, we put in these inner posts, which have done a really good job. So it's pretty sound. Yeah. It, this outer wall was the bigger, we said we uh, almost took a, the best part of a year to build this house. And I reckon probably about, I don't know, seven, eight months of it was over this kind of the wall structure, um, getting it right. Some of it, and then we took it back down again, we put it back up and that, and it took a long, long time to kind of get this really nice basket, this kind of structure on there. But, you know, and everything else, wasn't it? It was quite straightforward, yeah. uh, getting the rafters up there, getting these uprights, all of a sudden it came, came around very quickly. And then there's the getting the thatch on there, which takes a game for a, a while, doesn't it? A fair but few to be weeks. fair, I mean, most mm. of the time it was people working one day a week. Yeah. So that yeah. it wouldn't normally take that length to, to build it, I think. So hoping that it bodes well when we do put a fire in because that lintel is at a nice height, mm. uh, that that smoke ceiling that we've yeah. talked about will be just just right. This is uh, CS1, uh, sorry, CS1, shall I say. Um, and we built this house back in 2009 now. We had some storm damage done to it, so we've taken, uh, we've completely taken the roof off to redo it, basically. So what we ended up using is is ash beams in the in the last roof structure, and they were perhaps a little bit too thin. So what we were getting is this kind of sagging over the door. It was kind of bending in, um, as well as we had some rotted timber around the side there. So it was best just completely remove the the, the, the roof straighten up these plank sides and it's quite unusual and that's what was in the archaeology these sort of slot trenches so we've used these uh, oak planks straighten them up put a couple of supports in there we've used some thicker timbers but we've gone for scots pine this time um, and we're just now on the process of using water reed to, to re-thatch so hopefully in a few weeks time that'll be done operational and we can open it back up to the public and the school kids that visit us and that's the trouble is that it's having the right side it's the right type of oak as well that you can s split out and cleft we've actually used um, uh, planks sawn planks on this one to give the two inch thick planks to give the sort of same same effect um, and we've ended up using like wool sheep's wool insulation to kind of give it a corking down the sides there as well so um, yeah it's quite unusual and you can see our new support post that we've ended up putting there pegged in with pegged in with wedge Works very well. 
This is again is Danebury. We've taken a lot of roundhouses from Danebury, haven't we? So CS14, uh, circular structure 14. Um, and we built this one probably about 2017, I would say. It was a very much a lightweight structure. So we've used willow in the, in, in the walls of this one. And the willow is kind of poked, not into the ground, but into like a very thin lintels on the ground, just slightly dug in, poked through little holes and then woven. Um, the, the, the pitch of the roof's not quite right. It's too shallow, so it retains the water. Um, and we're seeing a lot of movement. You can see that in the doorway over here. Um, some big gaps basically <laughs> so oh, yeah. and that's just coming away from there so it's due to be coming down and to be replaced next summer if we can get through the winter with it maybe <laughs> so in a way it's kind of what not to do it is yeah play around with things and sometimes we get it right and sometimes we get it wrong and it depends on what sort of materials we have around us and uh, and what ends up working really so yeah. um, I'm just looking up the top there you've got some real bowing in on the on these roof up the roof here it's really starting to kind of come in here um, but no ring beam but no ring beam Which holding that and exactly yeah. yeah the walls are still fairly solid but unfortunately here at the door which is always the weakest point because if you think of it as a basket that you're cutting a giant big mm, square mm. out of um, right. that's the weak spot yeah. yeah exactly we've used birch birch poles on the uh, rafters on this they last all right, but we've done this before. You don't get the years out of them, and they tend to sort of get, again, sort of kind of go a bit powdery over time. Um, but that's fine. We learn from it. We move on, and we, we try something else. And I, th I think with this place, we, it's always, we've got a, a thousand fresh new ideas of what we want to build next, but we've got to remember we've got to keep on top of the maintenance yeah. of everything else, and it's always that sort of, I don't know, sort of two steps forward, two steps back, you know, and it's, uh, yeah. Or should I say three steps forward and two steps back? Oh. Would this have been wheat straw looking at the head? We got wheat straw on this one, yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching this episode. If you would like to see behind the scenes and in depth episodes of everything that goes on at Butzer Ancient Farm, then be sure to head to the link in the video description below to their Butzer Plus page.